There's a rule in computer programming, never trust user input. Now, it's not like users are ever doing anything maliciously, do they? Oh, no, no. Oh, wait, they do. And as history has shown us, quite a lot of companies have failed to protect their software, failed to protect their databases, and have fallen victim to being hacked quite a number of times. So I have built a deliberately vulnerable web page here, just a little demonstration purposes. So use a SQL database, this is MariaDB, as a backend, We've got PHP as the programming language on top of a light TBD web server. And this is on Ubuntu 16.04 virtual machine. So this is just a simple phone book here, and I'm sorry about the crudity of this example. I literally, literally threw this page together in about 30 minutes and then spent an hour trying to attack it. And actually, as I found, PHP 7 can withstand a bit of abuse. Not entirely though, as I will demonstrate. So yeah. It's a simple little phone book where you can enter a surname, first name, and number, and you can do a search. And the search comes, is looking for a surname. So uh, let's look at uh, cat. And you can see we have a result there. And it's just a little demonstration of what is actually going on. So let's look a bit further. The problem with this website is that the user inputs are going straight through to the SQL database. This is a demonstration of the query that's taken place. So select all from phone, phone table where surname equals cat. Yep, and sure enough, that has found one row of the database where the surname is cat. That's very nice, but what happens if I enter the search quote space or space one equals one? Yep, what does happen? Oh, something happens. We output the entire table. And this is the string that has gone through. So select all from phone where surname equals nothing or one equals one. So true. Everything's going to be a true value. And that's how it outputs it all. Now, this doesn't have to be used against a search field. You could use it against a input of username and password and be able to exfiltrate all user and password details from that database. And many companies have fallen victim to that as well. And most recently we have Yahoo have just given away half a billion usernames out of their database. Well, they've been obtained, yeah. Now, I did want to add a second command to this, but that's where I had trouble, and this seemed to be where PHP 7 was defending against it. We'll have a look at the code a bit more in a moment. But the next method of attack we have on this website is that there is no input validation done on this box here. So surname, first name, and number, we can enter anything. So we have bold underline and characters in the alphabet be entered into the number field. So let's see what happens when I hit submit. New record created successfully. Okay, yep. let's go back. Oh, we have HTML decorations here. We've got bold, underline, and yep, ABC there. So the data from the SQL table is being output directly onto the page. And the browser is doing its job and obeying the tags and doing something fancy with them here, which we have bold and underline. But what if an image tag was put in there instead? Or maybe a script, a script for a bit of malware or cookie theft. Hmm. The options are limitless here because I can put any HTML tags in there and run anything. And the browser will do its job of what it's been told to do. This is the actual code here, and as I said, it was a bit crude because I've put the CSS inside the HTML page, which isn't really the best idea, but whatever. So that's the definitions of the values for the database. Yeah, no problem with that. We've got a few functions here for adding record, drawing the search field, searching a record, showing the form, and showing all records. And then at the bottom here, we have where the code starts running. So this is database value using the MySQLi class for accessing the SQL database. Is the post value set for surname, first name, and number? That is the data there in the forms. So if that's set, then we add a record. If we're using a search, then we search for the record. Or otherwise, we're showing the form and showing all records, then closing the database, and then the page ends. So the mistake the programmer has made here is that they've put the post value straight through to the search. So what should happen is that we do some input validation on it. So I'm using the function preg replace. 
using regex. They are regex per character regular expressions. It's like matching parts of the string for expected values. It's a very flexible language, although very difficult to get your head around initially. I certainly had a lot of trouble understanding it, but now I've sort of got my head around it, it becomes a lot easier. And so I am replacing anything except a word, a decimal, a space, period, a dash, underscore, or a plus. So anything that is not one of those values, we replace with the value here, which is nothing. And we're taking that from the string post value of ph search, that search field. So then go across the search record, take that variable there, search, and so we reload the page. Then we'll try this attack again with all one equals one. Well, that's a bit different now. You see, we only have the search or 11. Everything else has been stripped out of it. That is exactly what I wanted. A legitimate search? Well, yes, we have found Itchy the mouse. But that's completely eliminated the chance of getting any SQL injection attacks on that search field. Now let's move across to the input. So that is on, that is on add record. So the command insert into phone table, ID, surname, first name, number, the values. Yeah, this looks a bit weird here where I've had to escape the string. Alternatively, I could have used double quote, but anyway, that's uh, beside the point. Anyway, I've put in the values, ph surname, ph first name, ph number, and I've just taken those from the post values. The alternative I'm going to use here is preg match. This is a regex match. So this pattern match is going to look at the start of the string is caret, and then any character within these brackets. So I am looking for a word again, alpha character, decimal, numeric, alpha numeric characters, space, dash, period, underscore, plus, and I want to match those characters one or more times. The dollar represents the end of the string, so that string wants to have matched one of those characters within those brackets one or more times. And if it's more than zero, that means a match has taken place. And that's using on the first name field, so yeah, if valid, the variable ph first name equals post first name. Else, well, this is a bit crude here, we're going to die, and no further execution of the PHP script will take place. So it's the same pattern again used for surname, yeah, no problems there. But for number, I want to match a decimal, space, dash, or a plus. So let's try it out. Refresh the page, surname, blah, blah. Invalid surname, okay. Okay, so we'll take a valid surname here, Jas, and we'll muck around with the first name again, so put a semicolon on it. No, invalid first name. So put a valid first name in there with a dash on it, why not? The number, yeah. Well, okay, yeah, it's an invalid number because it only has alphabetic characters in there. So the so number will take, yeah, plus four, four, and then oh, one, two, three, four, yeah, there. So submit, new record created successfully. And indeed it has. So that was a look at the dangers of not restricting user input on a SQL database and what we can do to prevent any attacks against it. Well, thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.